We thought we would uh, find out more about that and find out what is going on with something called Mission Save. We'd like to welcome to the Big 550 KTRS uh, William Wood, special agent in charge of the FBI St. Louis Division. Uh, Mr. Woods, Sergeant Special Agent William Woods, thanks for, the, thanks for joining us. Welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Oh, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Tell us uh, what happened last week. So last week we had a bunch of uh, the agencies that are part of Mission Save execute uh, 15 arrest warrants and multiple search warrants against the Cochrane Crips gang, which is a gang that uh, exists around Carr Square, Columbus Square neighborhood. And basically, you know, it was an effort to dismantle that gang completely. And uh, how successful were you? Very successful. Um, so the, just about uh, all of the people that we were targeting uh, have uh, been arrested and are in custody. And uh, the search warrants were productive, um, multiple guns, money, and drugs. You don't hear about gangs as much as you heard about gangs years ago. Are they still as prevalent today? Have they changed? How come we don't hear as much as we used to? I'm not sure why you don't hear as much as you used to, because there's certainly uh, a lot of gangs in the St. Louis region. They're not the gangs that you typically hear about, like the Bloods and the Crips. They're not very well structured like that. They're predominantly neighborhood-based. But they're out there and they're doing a lot of damage and they're responsible for the majority of the violence that we're seeing in, in St. Louis. Those arrested, were they from the St. Louis area or were there some from maybe outside or Chicago area? They were pretty much all from the St. Louis region. Uh, we had a couple that uh, had left St. Louis, but uh, you know, prior to us uh, affecting the arrests, but you know, we were able to locate them in Phoenix and Atlanta. Uh, we've often said on the show that most of the violence that we hear about each and every day here, as you mentioned, is gang-related. Is, is it drug and gang-related? I mean, are they fighting for turf, and that's why the violence Ab occurs? Absolutely. I mean, it, it comes down to money and greed, but uh, the gangs, you know, they're fighting over their, what you call turf, but it's really their customers. Um, and, you know, oftentimes we'll see one of the first things that they'll take after a shooting is the person's phone. Because on that phone, you know, they'll have all of their customers on the phone. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, people who are addicted to drugs, they really don't care who they're buying their drugs from. So if they get a call and say, hey, I, I can tell you where, you know, you can purchase your drugs from me and the person they normally purchase them from is gone, they're going to go to that person. Uh, is it heroin? Is it meth? Is it cocaine? Is it something else they're buying? It's all three of the above. The, the number one drug in the state of Missouri is still meth. Um, so you hear a lot about heroin, uh, but the number one used drug is still meth. But heroin is so lethal uh, because uh, it's oftentimes laced with fentanyl, and that's where we're seeing all these overdose deaths. Uh, is, is the prescription drug um, laws in place that slow down the sale of cold medicine, has that helped? Has anything helped? Uh, over the last couple of years? I, I think the, the awareness campaign is starting to take effect. Um, I tell people all the time, and uh, as one of my colleagues said, it's, it's not a microwave solution. It's a, more like a crock pot solution. So it takes time. Uh, we're working with schools and some of the local movie theaters, and we're giving presentations on a regular basis about how addictive some of these drugs are that, that lead to the high overdose death rates that we have in St. Louis. And I'd like to mention, too, you know, as a society, we have a tendency to focus on the homicide rates. You know, it's always in the paper. We have this many homicides year to date. 
but the number of overdose deaths that we have in St. Louis is almost twice that of the homicides. And uh, for those people who think, well, this is just an inner city problem, it's not. The, the number of overdose deaths in St. Louis County was 181 last year, 286 in the city. So it's, it's clearly not just an inner city problem. Since you, you've broken up some of these gangs and made all of these arrests, do you feel like there will be a marked decrease in uh, the number of violent deaths that we'll see upcoming? And what about drug transactions? Well, we hope so. Um, and we're going to keep you know, plugging away. Uh, Mission Save specifically targets the most violent people. So you have uh, in Mission Save, St. Louis Metro PD, St. Louis County PD, the FBI, ATF, the DEA, and now the Missouri Highway Patrol is going to be joining us. But we, we target the most violent offenders. So all of our intelligence units look at who are the shooters. Because shooters have a tendency when somebody actually crosses that line and pulls the trigger, commits a homicide, they're much more likely to do it again. And because of that, a small number of shooters can account for a lot of the homicides. So those are the people that we're targeting. Uh, is there something you wish you could do, a law that you need passed, um, something from the governor, the mayor, the media? Is there anything that can make your job easier uh, to help solve the problem? <laughs> well, that's a great question. Um, you know, certainly tightening up s some of the uh, prescription laws uh, would help. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into a debate about gun control, but there is a prevalence of guns that are out there in the streets, and uh, it just makes uh, crimes. Uh, if, if you have a gun uh, and, you, and you make that rash decision, um, if you don't have a gun, it doesn't result in a homicide. Uh, so gun control certainly would be part of it, uh, but those are decisions that have to be made, you know, by the public in general on what they want. You know, uh, those are tough choices in the, when it comes to gun control. In the two years that um, this sort of joint strike task force has been together, you've arrested 539 people, you've seized 242 weapons, you've seen ungodly amounts of cocaine and heroin and assets and everything else. Uh, have you made a dent in the drug uh, trade? Because it seems to me like the drug dealer is going to be there for as long as the drug addict is looking for him. You're right. Um, if, if there's a demand, somebody's going to find a way to create the supply. That said, if we can make it harder for them, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to keep chipping away, you know, each and every day. Uh, I don't know uh, what the homicide rate would be um, and a number of overdose deaths would be if those 540 weapons and tens of thousands of rounds of ammunition were still in the street, uh, as well as, you know, all of the kilograms and uh, of the different assortment of drugs that were out there. I'd like to think that we're making a difference by doing all of those things, uh, but is it still a problem? Certainly. William Woods, special agent in charge of the FBI here in St. Louis, last question for you. Would you like to see drugs legalized? No. <laughs> that that uh, has been tried in different cities uh, around the world, and it, it's never worked. I mean, people... People think prohibition didn't work, but uh, prohibition did work. The amount of alcohol consumed dropped dramatically because the majority of the public do follow the law. And uh, even those that don't, it's, it's when it was harder to get alcohol, uh, they tended to drink less. Once it's legalized, the consumption increases dramatically. And uh, I have every reason to believe that 
uh, drug use would be the same way. Special Agent in Charge, William Woods, we thank you for your service. Pass on all of our best to uh, your uh, coworkers and your other agents, and uh, you're, we're always here, always here if you need us. Thank you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Special agent in charge of the FBI here in St. Louis. So there's a story about crime mm -hmm. you don't normally hear from the person who's on the front lines. I know. It seems like their work, I mean, their work is never going to be done. Never but we appreciate never ending all goal. the hard work. 726, Big Five.